In this video I will show you how to use the pivot table facility in Excel to carry out some basic analysis of data of a data set involving categorical variables. Uh, I'll be repeating the same sorts of uh, calculations and procedures that I uh, did uh, using R in the uh, video called Factors and Tables in R. So here is the same small data set that I used in that R video. Uh, it's a data set of showing 20 cases um, and the two categorical variables are gender and site and then there's a numeric variable in terms of usage of these sites in hours per week. So the first thing to do is to turn this data uh, set, this range of data, into an Excel table which makes it easier to then create pivot tables. So to do that, I need to highlight the data. Now it's important that your data has headings, because these of course will be the variable names that we're going to use. So highlight the data, go to Insert, choose Table. Confirm that the range is correctly uh, chosen and the, that my table as headers is clicked, which it will be. Click OK, and you now find that this data range is now a table, and notice you can see that because there are these drop-down filter buttons here, which you can use to filter on the data. So for example, if I wanted to filter on gender and just show the male uh, cases, I can uh, deselect them all here and then just click male. And there we are. Uh, you can also, I could drill down further by, uh, uh, by uh, filtering now on site, but I'll, in fact, clear the filter so we can get back to the full data set. So using the pivot table facility, it's possible to create a simple frequency tables, frequency distributions, um, and uh, but also uh, what in statistics tend to be called cross tabulations or contingency tables. Uh, here in Excel they, they're referred to as pivot tables, where in other words you can break down the uh, data according to two uh, criteria in two categorical variables. So how do we create this? So let, to um, create uh, a pivot table, you simply, first of all, click anywhere in the table. This is the advantage of it being a table. It means you don't have to highlight the whole thing. Just clicking on any cell will do. Go to the Insert menu and choose Pivot Table. Confirm that the table uh, is selected, of course it will be, it's it given it a name table 2, it might say table 1 in your case. Now, where do you want to put the pivot table on a new worksheet uh, or on the existing worksheet? Well, given we've got plenty of room here, I'll put it on the existing worksheet. Click here to tell it the um, top left cell, like that. Click OK, and it sets up a sort of uh, placeholder where you can, where the pivot table will go and opens up the pivot table fields panel here where you can create the table. Now to do this, you notice that the three variables are listed here automatically. To create pivot tables, uh, you simply drag the appropriate variable into the appropriate panel here. Into rows, if you want the that um, variable to appear on the rows. Into columns, if you want it in the columns and here in values, the actual date that you want to be uh, presented. So for example, let's do a simple uh, frequency table of, the, of gender here to see how many of these 20 cases, 20 respondents were male, how many female. So to do that, I'll simply drag gender here into rows. As you can see, it begins to set, start creating the table. And then all I need then is to drag gender once again into it, into values. And as you can see by default, that gives me the count. And so here I have my little frequency table showing that the of the 20 respondents here, nine were female, 11 were male. Now you notice that it has a little um, filter button here, rather like uh, over in the table here, which you can use to filter uh, within the, the pivot table itself. If you don't want to do that, and probably you, most of the time you wouldn't, you can remove this by going to pivot table analyze menu up here, 
This, of course, will only be there if the pivot table is, uh, is selected. And simply choosing to remove these field headers, and that, as you can see, removes that little uh, label and the drop-down menu, which we don't want. Now, if you wanted this to be show rather than the actual number of men and women, you wanted to show a percentage breakdown, that's easy to do. You can go back here to the count of gender uh, variable here, click the down arrow and choose value field settings. Go to show values as, which currently is showing no calculation, but if you click down here and then just choose percentage of grand total, so that it will show the percentage of the total uh, by gender, which is what we want. Click OK, and there we have it. As you can see, it's now showing that 45%, um, 9 out of 20, of course, um, were female and the other 55% male. Now, it's also one advantage of pivot tables is that it's very easy to draw a chart of this without having to highlight the whole data and, and, and choose the appropriate graph. Simply the fact that the uh, one of the that the pivot table is selected by having one of the cells selected, any will do, means that you can simply go to the pivot table analyze menu and choose a pivot chart. And as you can see, it inserts a pivot chart tied to the data in this pivot table, which means, of course, if you change the data, uh, it, the chart will automatically change. So click pivot chart. And by default, it chooses a column chart, a bar chart, which is appropriate here. Click OK. And we have our chart. Now, you notice again that there are some buttons on here, which could be one, one here has a filter button again. If you don't want those, which again, typically you probably wouldn't, you can remove those again by going to Pivot Chart Analyze menu and choosing to remove those field buttons and then hide all and then they disappear. Uh, notice, of course, it by default gives you a, a, a legend, which in this case you don't need, so I can simply delete that in the usual way. So this is a normal chart which can be edited in the normal way by adding elements here. Um, changing the title and so on. Now I'll now to show what happens if I change this back to uh, simply the count of gender, um, the, the sum rather than the percentages, and it will change the chart. Let me go back to here and go back into value field settings, change the values as back to no calculation. And there, as you can see, it's put it back to the actual number and the chart axis here has changed accordingly. So, as you can see, it's very easy to create a simple uh, frequency distribution. Obviously, I could do this for one of the other variables, uh, for site as well, and create an appropriate chart. So let's look now at how to create a pivot table, a cross tabulation. Uh, in uh, Excel, uh, where we can break down responses according to both gender and site. So I'll just delete this chart here because I, I don't need that. I'll just select it and delete it. Okay, so um, let's again click in anywhere in the, in the table of data so that we can now insert another pivot table. Again, I'll put it on the worksheet here, down here. Okay, so this time I'm going to analyze by both gender and site. So I'm going to put site on the rows and drag the site variable into rows and gender into column. Now, if I want just a breakdown of the numbers uh, of in each category, uh, break down the 20 respondents according to uh, sight and gender. I can simply drag one of the variables here, gender or sight, it doesn't matter which, into the values panel. And it says giving me count of gender. Uh, in fact, it's um, a, a count of um, 
both sight and gender. And as you can see, that gives me exactly what I want here. Let me just widen that. So it's taken the 20 respondents here and, and categorized them by both f uh, sight and gender. So we can see, for example, that there were four um, male respondents here who used Facebook as their main uh, social media site, three uh, women who used Twitter and so on. So you get notice the row totals and the column totals as well. Again, I don't want these labels here with the drop down menu, so I'll remove those as I did before. Like that. You probably um, would might want to change the heading here, so you could just simply double click and then edit it to just call it, say, count, or even just leave it blank. Again, it's scrunched up those columns, so I'll just need to widen them a bit. There we are. Again, of course, if you wanted this to be in percentages, we saw how to do that. Uh, as we did uh, before, just use the same procedure. Um, now, of course, you could also nice, draw a nice um, chart of this. And again, the advantage of it being a, a, a pivot table is that it, it connects the chart to the data and draws an appropriate one very quickly. So if I go to pivot table, analyze again, choose pivot chart. As you can see, by default, it's chosen a really nice chart, similar to the one that uh, you could get in R. And there we have a chart where site is here on the horizontal axis and then gender is shown by using different colored bars. Again, it's very similar to what you could get in R. Again, if you don't want these buttons, these uh, filter buttons here, let's remove them by going to field buttons and choosing hide all. Now, of course, I probably need to add a title and uh, maybe an axis label here, but obviously that can be done in the usual way. So as you can see, again, you get a very nice chart here, um, which is tied to the table. So again, I say, let me change the table here to show percentages uh, rather than the actual number of respondents. So I'll just click it, go here to count, value field settings, show values as, and again, I want percentage of grand total like that. And there it changed them. And of course it changes the chart automatically, which is a very nice feature. So again, it's, so as you can see, it's possible to draw simple frequency tables based on one variable uh, or a cross tabulation here. Now, what about using the, uh, so far I haven't used the usage uh, in uh, hours per week variable, the numeric variable. You can easily do that by uh, putting it in here into the values uh, pane. So let me show how to do that. I'll create another table. Down here. And this time I'll again put gender um, site rather on the on the rows, gender on the columns. This time I'm going to drag the usage per hour into the values um, pane. So that will be the data that's shown within the body of the table. And as you can see by default, it chooses it, it shows the summation of those um, uh, values. In other words, um, of those uh, females who were on Facebook, when you sum up their hours of usage per week, it comes 144. Um, the men who were on Twitter in total, the, the, of which there were, um, let's see, let's just widen this to see it, 25% of them, which I think was about three, was it? Um, I noticed I put that back into percentages rather than the actual number. Their total usage of those of those uh, men on Twitter was 160 hours. So as you can see, it's possible to use the numeric variable as well. Again, if you don't want the sum, perhaps you want average usage. 
of the uh, people in each category, their average hours per week. Very easy, go to back to here, choose value field settings. And as you can see, you can choose from a different number of options, including the average. So let's click that. And now it shows average hours per week. Notice that it's um, by default used a rather large number of decimal places. If you want to change that, you don't need to uh, change the number of, uh, go to each cell and change it individually. You can do that very easily by simply going back to here, back to value field settings, and you'll see that there's a button here for number format. Click that, go to number, let's put it just with one decimal place. And there we are, very neatly done, very neatly and quickly done, uh, rather than uh, formatting each cell individually. So as you can see, the average hours used was uh, of men on Pinterest, 19 hours per week. And the overall average was 32. So as you can see, very easy to create uh, cross tabulations here. Uh, I've, I've done exactly the same sorts of, of, of um, routines here, same sort of, of, of calculations of analysis that I did in the R video, but here using the facility, the pivot table facility in Excel.